Hey y'all, I wanted to um, uh, check in with everybody, say hi. And I'm a little bit excited because this is the first morning actually for a while since it's, you know, been nice and cool in the morning here in Texas. I'm in the Texas Hill Country right now. And oh, anyway, it's been really, really nice right now, uh, but it's been... Oh man, almost 80 degrees in the morning and gets up to like 90s and then 100 degrees Fahrenheit very quickly in the morning even. So oh, it's about, feels like 65 degrees. I haven't checked the temperature, but that's what it feels like. So we are starting to get some relief from this brutal uh, heat wave that most of the, most of the United States has been experiencing. Doce. Sit. Lucia, sit. Uh -uh. sit. Sit down. Sit. I got to teach her not to just come grab it. Sit. Lucia. Lucia, sit. Sit. Good sit. Good girl. Go get. Uh, so if you're new to the pack, the little puppy is my American Pitbull Terrier. That's Gypsy. She's about three months old. This one right here is the... Um, Adult uh, female, she's about three. Dolce. Dolce is very dominant. Very, uh, as far as corsos go, King Corsos, kind of corsos, she's, uh, she's pretty high energy, I guess you could say. She's intense. Sit. Sit. And then Lucia is the 11 month old kind of corso puppy. And then Al Ozzy is the the big alpha male right there. Tux, come on, Tux. And then that's Tux. He's the pitbull mix. So those are the two males. Tux and Ozzy. And uh, then the, I have the, th the three females. The two kind of corso and the one pitbull. So yeah, that's the pack. And this is our morning routine. Yeah, so this is our morning routine. We come out here, and the dogs really get a lot of their energy out. You know, they uh, get a lot of their good exercise. With, um, rough playing like that, sparring. They'll do this for a good hour even, and then be completely out of breath. When they come back inside, and then they'll um, sleep most of the day while I'm at work. So it works pretty well. Hi, Doge. This my noche. And so, uh, let me just take a sip real quick. I'm just waking up. Hi, my noche. Well, anyways. Yeah, I wanted to talk about something that I guess pretty timely now to talk about is, um, how much, how, how, how uh, much heat and cold can a kind of corso take you know um some dogs you know like for example siberian husky can really take the cold much longer than say a kind of corso could kind of corso has a very short coat good girl very good Good girl. But so yeah, so kind of course so cannot really take um, extreme heat, excessive heat. Uh, they, I know a lot of people kennel their their kind of corsos, but you know. Because of global warming and the way that the environment is so drastically changing, it's getting hotter for longer. Sure, sure. Over the over time, over eons of time, we've had periods of, of extreme weather like this, but not for this length of time, and not um, for this this with this kind of frequency. This is something that the Earth has really never experienced. According to scientists, I'm not the expert, but I just follow the science, and so that's what the science says. 
and so uh, so it's not going away it's there's going to be a more and more extreme temperatures so most of the summer here in, in texas it, it was triple digits as far as fahrenheit over 100 degrees fahrenheit for you know several weeks in a row and the kind of corsos definitely would not be able to uh really take that if they were outside full time you know if, if they're in a place where they can get shade even in the shade y'all yeah there's a bob marley song 96 degrees in the shade yeah it, uh, it's probably you know even even hotter than that in the shade in some areas so I uh, I got Ozzy out of a kennel in Louisiana that that was uh, shut down for animal abuse or alleged animal abuse, and her kennel in Louisiana a um, couple summers ago was uh, yeah you know, she had like over thirty dogs she had probably more kind of corso than most breeders have at one time and um, her kennel. Her kennels, uh, her kennel dogs. When I would go, I went there to pick up one of my dogs and uh, just saw some of her kennel dogs, um, you know, panting like crazy. And and uh, she would have her staff go in and just hose the dogs down periodically. So there are things you can do, but uh, I believe someone that has a dog from her kennel that I'm on a Facebook group with uh, recently posted um, that her, her three, three-year-old male, beautiful male, passed away. And and she just said in the comments somewhere, like, watch your dogs, y'all. It's, it's really hot out there. They can't really take the heat or something to that effect. So I suspect her dog passed away because of uh, heat stroke. Ooh, um, so yeah, it, it's it's real, and and uh, heat stroke can happen very quickly. And but you know my dogs are both indoor outdoor dogs. They have a doggy door, so they can come inside whenever they want to. And they do spend most of the day indoors where it's cool. And we only come outside here in the mornings, early mornings, like right now. It's beautiful weather right now. And then, uh, and then in the evenings when it's cooled down, and when in the peak of summer, you know, when it was 104 or 105 degrees Fahrenheit, they wouldn't be doing this kind of playing until after 8 p.m., where it's actually like still kind of in the 90s. <laughs> so, but but cooled off. So there was no direct heat at that time, but uh, or direct sun. I mean. So, uh, and the dogs just naturally would do that. They just wouldn't come outside for a length of, lengthy period of, of time until after 8 p.m. So they know what, what their body can take. I know um, some people are kind of the old school thought. You know, a lot of like uh, country people, for, um, you know, farm old farm boys, old people that you know have grew up in the country. I know them. I know there's a lot of people like that that feel, oh, a dog's a dog. A dog can take it, no matter what you do. A dog, a dog was a dog that evolved from being outside, and they can stay outside easily. That's not true. Dogs die all the time from extreme weather. It, and it depends on the breed. And so that's why I kind of wanted to talk about it. With this breed, no, they, they, they can't really take it. Look, they overheat more easily because they're, um, they're heavier, uh, way more body mass. And so, yeah, they, they just can't take extreme heat. Um, and yes, there there is some suffering that goes on, even if it doesn't kill the dog. They may suffer greatly if it doesn't even if it, if it doesn't kill them. And it may kill them. Like I said, I think 
I'm almost certain that that uh, Facebook friend that I had, she lost her dog due to heat stroke. Her kind of corso. But anyways, um, it, but there there are things you can mitigate the heat. You know, you can put sprayers out there. You can put the dog in the shade. Just but you just really have to monitor that temperature, because even the, in the shade, you know, it can be unbearably hot. Um, kind of course, so they don't really take extreme cold either for lengthy periods of time. So let me know in the comments uh, what y'all's experience. Is there anybody out there that has an out outdoors only kind of corso? I would say it's not recommended because they like to be with with their family. <clears throat> um, so for for that reason, it's not recommended to keep kind of corso strictly outdoors. Uh, but yeah, I'm curious to know uh, everybody's experience on that. No, Jay, she still wants to play. Okay, okay. And, uh, yeah, let me know in the comments uh, if you know anybody that had a dog that was kept outside most often and how did they do? And how do your dogs do? Do you live in a climate that has a lot of snow? Extreme heat or extreme cold? And how do they do? One thing that I will do, and I'll show you probably when I get home. Uh, I'll add on to this video once I get home. You could see my routine, but I'll put ice cubes in the water and things like that. But um, but yeah, I'll see y'all in a little bit. I'm gonna get ready to go to work. Okay, yeah, so it's really still very hot outside, even towards the end of the day. And so this water bowl has been sitting here for a while. And so I need to refresh this water. And I refresh their water multiple times per day whenever I can. Cause see how dirty it can get. So I just gonna, oops. Try to do this with one hand. I usually throw this to the plants. These are Texas. Oh, sorry, these are, um wildflowers out here that so yeah so because their uh, their water dishes water bowls get really slimy they can get this film on in the bowl so I, I like to scrub it either with like with one of these or I like this thing too. This really gets it pretty good. I clean it really well. First. And then I throw some ice in there. There's Lucia. here. Lucia. So Lucia can go bobbing for ice. <laughs> no, the puppy usually does, but this ice will melt pretty quickly. But it, you know, it'll, it'll keep it cool for a little while. This is my gypsy. This is my gypsy. Okay, gypsy. Yep, she got one. She's going fishing for icicles. Ice cubes. Get it, kitty. But yeah, so this will keep their water uh, nice and cool out here. And that'll last me, you know, out through the evening. It'll start to cool down here in about an hour or two. I see how quickly it, it all melted. But uh, yeah, if I don't do that, it's just warm water. And uh, so anyways, yeah, I hope y'all having a good day and staying cool, everybody. Let me know uh, in the comments what y'all do. 
Is there anybody that has a kind of corso that's mostly outside and how do you mitigate that? I know some people have kennels, breeders and whatnot, you know. So yeah, how do you keep them cool in this severe heat? Um, uh, and again, again, thanks for watching. She got the final one there. <laughs> and we'll see you on the next one. Gypsy. Gypsy. <laughs> Gypsy girl.